In this video, we will talk about glomerular filtration. The blood flow to both kidneys is 1000 ml per minute, which is referred to as renal blood flow. 60% or 600 ml from this liter of blood is plasma, and this is considered as renal plasma flow. Every minute, approximately 20% of the plasma from these 600 ml is filtered into the Bowman's capsule. This process is called glomerular filtration, which is the first step in making urine. The rate at which the volume of plasma is filtered across all of the glomeruli in both kidneys per unit time is called glomerular filtration rate. GFR is measured in volume per unit time. In a young healthy adult, glomerular filtration rate is about 120 ml per minute, which is the same 20% that I've already said above, or 180 liters per day. It is very important to know that GFR is dependent on two factors net filtration pressure and filtering membrane. First, let's talk about net filtration pressure. As in other capillaries, there are factors determining net filtration pressure. There are hydrostatic pressure of glomerular capillary, oncotic pressure of glomerular capillary, hydrostatic pressure of Bowman's space, oncotic pressure of Bowman's space. I will divide them into two groups the forces that promote filtration and forces that oppose filtration. The forces promoting filtration are hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillary and oncotic pressure of Bowman's space. The forces that oppose filtration are the oncotic pressure of glomerular capillaries and hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's space. The hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillary is 45 millimeters of mercury. This is a very strong force and the only force that promotes filtration. Under normal conditions, this is the main factor that determines GFR. The second factor which determines net filtration pressure is oncotic pressure in glomerular capillaries. It is roughly 24 millimeters of mercury and is the main force that opposes filtration. Oncotic pressure is created by presence of proteins which has not been filtered across glomeruli. This brings us to a very important point. As fluid passes the major resistance point, it loses a lot of pressure. Traveling through glomerular capillary, the hydrostatic pressure remains constant, but because here the fluid is filtered without protein, oncotic pressure, which opposes filtration, increases from the beginning to the end of the glomerular capillaries. So, logically, the GFR decreases from the beginning to the end of the glomerular capillaries. The third factor which determines net filtration pressure is hydrostatic pressure in Bowman's space. This force opposes filtration. It is roughly 8 millimeters of mercury and fairly constant and does not affect the rate of filtration. Finally, the fourth factor is oncotic pressure in Bowman's space. This force is promoting filtration. Under normal conditions, the concentration of protein in a glomerular filtrate is so low that the oncotic pressure of the Bowman's capsule fluid is considered to be zero. And now let's calculate the net filtration pressure using a formula and normal values. Net filtration pressure equals hydrostatic pressure in a glomerular capillaries minus oncotic pressure in a glomerular capillaries minus hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's space. So 45 minus 24 minus 8 equals 13 millimeters of mercury.
13 millimeters of mercury is the net force promoting filtration. To sum it up, GFR mainly depends on hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries. Thus, increasing the glomerular hydrostatic pressure increases GFR, and decreasing the glomerular hydrostatic pressure decreases GFR. If a young individual donates one of his kidneys, the GFR should cut at half because he had lost half of the functioning nephrons. The GFR should reduce from 120 down to 60 ml per minute because 120 is the GFR of all nephron in both kidneys. However, GFR reduces only 25% because the remaining kidney compensates. The kidney does this by increasing individual glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which in turn increases GFR. GFR in the remaining kidney increases from 120 up to 180 ml per minute. In a previous video, we have mentioned that the GFR depends on either net filtration pressure or filtering membrane. We have already talked about the net filtration pressure, so in this video we'll talk about the filtering membrane of the glomerulus. The membrane of the glomerulus consists of three main structures, capillary endothelial wall, glomerular basement membrane, epithelial cell layer of podocytes. Together these three layers make up the filtration barrier. Let me draw here a glomerulus and show you some important structures. So this is the Bowman space and these cells are called podocytes. Podocytes wrap around the capillaries of the glomerulus. The first filtration barrier is the capillary endothelial wall with fenestrations that is perforated by thousands of small holes. Therefore, this type of capillary is called a fenestrated capillary. The second filtration barrier surrounding the endothelium is the basement membrane, which consists of a meshwork of collagen and proteoglycan fibril that have large space through which large amounts of water and small solutes can filter. The final part of the glomerular membrane is a layer of epithelial cell that line the outer surface of the glomerulus. These cells are not continuous but have long foot-like processes that encircle the outer surface of the capillaries. The food processes are separated by gaps called filtration slit through which the glomerular filtrate moves. The capillary wall with its fenestrated endothelium, the basement membrane with hydrated space and the interdigitating food processes of the podocytes combined with an overall large surface area creates a high hydraulic conductivity. Hydraulic conductivity means it is permeable to water and dissolved solutes. It is extremely important to know that the filterability of substances by the glomerular membrane depends on two things. First, it depends on size of the molecules, and second, on the electrical charge on the molecule. The major electrolytes like sodium, chloride, potassium, and bicarbonate, etc., are easily or freely filtered because they have a small size when compared to the pores of the glomerular membrane. In addition, it is very important to know that the electrical charge of the molecule affects filterability of substances through the glomerular membrane. The molecular scale diameter of the plasma protein albumin is only about 6 nanometers, whereas the pores of the glomerular membrane are thought to be about 8 nanometers. 
Albumin size allows it to be filtered. However, it is not filtered through the glomerular membrane. This is because all three layers, I mean capillary endothelial wall, glomerular basement membrane, and epithelial cell layer have negative charge on them. This does not allow the albumin, which has also negative charge on it, to be filtered despite that their size allow it. There are two important syndromes related to the loss of protein through the glomerular membrane, nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is a non-inflammatory injury to the glomerular membrane system. In this case, the negative charge on the basement membrane are lost, but not much else has changed here. As a result of this loss of negative charge on the basement membrane, some of the lower molecular weight proteins, especially albumin, are filtered and appear in the urine, a condition known as proteinuria or albuminuria. The most common clinical signs are marked proteinuria, which is more than 3.5 grams per day, edema because of loss of plasma oncotic pressure, hyperalbuminemia because of albumin loss in urine, lipid urea because of disrupted membrane system and proteins in urine, hyperlipidemia because of increased lipid synthesis in liver. In nephritic syndrome, there is an inflammatory disruption of the glomerular membrane system. This disruption allows proteins and cells to cross the filtering membrane. The most common clinical signs are proteinuria less than 3.5 grams per day, uh, hematuria because of disrupted membrane, oliguria because inflammatory infiltrates reduce fluid movement across the membrane, hypertension because of inability of kidney to regulate the extracellular volume, azotemia because of inability to filter and excrete urea. The materials which are filtered across the glomerular membrane are divided into two groups, materials that are easily or freely filtered and materials that are not freely filtered. The followings are easily or freely filtered. Major electrolytes like sodium chloride, potassium, calcium, and bicarbonate. Metabolic waste products like urea creatinine. Metabolites like glucose, amino acids, lactate, organic acids like ketone bodies. Non-natural substances like etiolene PAH. Lower weight proteins and peptides like insulin, myoglobin, growth hormone, glucagon, FSH, LH, HCG. The followings are not freely filtered. Albumin and other plasma proteins. Lipid-soluble substances bound to plasma proteins, such as lipid-soluble bilirubin, T4, progesterone, and estrogen, and other lipid-soluble hormones. Unbound lipid-soluble substances such as free cortisol are filtered and can appear in urine. 